Do you think the Packers should sign A.B.? Uh, let me go back in history a little bit. There was a time when A.B. was with the Steelers. Oh, yeah, keep, keep us all up here. I want R.C. to, to be here to see this. <laughs> time when A.B. was with the Steelers and A.B. was having issues uh -huh. with the team and people were all over A.B. for quitting on the team yep. and Ben Rosberger didn't like him and people were complaining. And I remember going on a television show and being on that television show with a young man named Ryan Clark. And I said... <laughs> We got to give A.B. the benefit of the doubt. And I said that uh, Ben Roethlisberger is no saint. We can't assume that A.B. is the problem. It could be a tough situation. And I said A.B. is so talented, you better figure out a way to work it out. I said all that. And then R.C. was like, I played with A.B. A.B. will tell you what he wants to hear. A.B. is not mature. A.B. A is a problem. And I was like, Ryan, you wrong. You don't understand, Ryan Clark. You wrong. You got to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then A.B. went on to the Raiders, blew that situation up, went on to the, to the Patriots. That situation didn't work out necessarily. And then I'm like, man, I should have listened to that, that wise brother, Ryan Clark. And now I say, no, they should not go get him. And now, Ryan Clark, what do you have to say to that? Of course they should not go get him because he's unreliable, because he's immature, because he's somebody who you cannot depend on. These are things that a man who played with him once told me. So, Ryan, how do you feel today? I feel like you're wrong, Dom. I feel like that you should have been with me then. And so if you were with me then, I want you to be with me now. This okay. is not a, a thing where the Packers should kick the tires on A.B. This is not a thing where the Packers should put out some feelers. The Packers have to get Antonio Brown signed. They need Antonio Brown on this team. They even need Antonio Brown in this locker room. And not because he's going to make it a better locker room, but because if you don't have him in the locker room, you can't have him on the grass because he's not on your team. And if you want to – listen – one of my favorite shows is Quantum Leap. And Quantum Leap, they got a guy named Sam Beckett, and he and he walk around with this dude named Al. You, nobody else could see Al. Al's a hologram. But Sam Beckett used to go, go back in the past and put right what once went wrong. That was the tagline. That's what the Packers have to do because Molly mentioned it. They didn't go out and help and um, – Aaron Rodgers in the draft. They didn't get one of these wide receivers when 34 of them were picked. Well, now you got a chance to get a dude that's better than all of them. And, oh, you can get him and not owe him anything, not guarantee him anything, not strap your, your, your organization down because you got to give him big money because he has to prove that he can even stay available. <laughs> so, but what you do know is, what you know is, if Antonio Brown is on the field, it is very, very likely that he's the best player out there. And now you add him to a top 10 receiver, a true number one receiver in Devontae Adams. And then you have Aaron Jones in the backfield. You go out and get a compliment in the second round as a power back from Boston College. And you got Aaron Rodgers, who is mad because instead of getting him some help in the first round, you went out and you got Jordan Love. Listen, I said it this morning. The only love that Aaron Rodgers probably wanted was Leon Lonnie Love, <laughs> right? Because he, because what he did, because when he saw Mama Payne in the church, he sent blessings at a long distance, and it was coming at her underhand. That's the only love that he wanted to see. You and so to... now, if you get Antonio Brown, this team is immediately better, Dom. Immediately you... better. And if he messes up, send him home. You're trying to win me over with your to... with your references that only me, you, and like 10% of our audience get. <laughs> you know how much I love that. Because now you got people out here Googling Re Reverend Lonnie Love, and they are going to be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> However, I agree with you. A.B. is nasty. He's a great player. But the assumption that he's going to come in and make everything better is only assuming that he only shows up on game day. He is in that locker room, and he is also in the community making the decisions that A.B makes and you're making all these leaps based on the assumption that AB is in a situation where he realizes that he does not have much leverage and that is going to that's going to force him to behave rationally in this situation. I obviously am not a doctor, so I'm not going to extend any sort of diagnosis or analysis. All I'm going to do is base it on the track record that it's that I've seen. It seems like he has a difficult time consistently making the right decisions. You bring him into that locker room, I'm 
not a guy who thinks, who believes in distractions necessarily. I don't think he's going to break up the locker room by distraction, but I do know that what happened with the Patriots, one of the things that happened was A.B. went too far. A.B.'s um, potential punishment became a problem. The Patriots organization wanted to move on from him, <coughs> and the quarterback and some of the players did not. That created a riff in one of the best run organizations we have in this league. The idea that you don't think a similar thing could happen in Green Bay is foolish to me. I think that is dangerous. You are giving, whether you're giving him a lot of money or not, you're giving him a great deal of power and influence in your locker room. I don't think it's as easy as you think. Whatever mess that he creates, which we all have to agree that it's at least a 50-50 chance that he's going to create a mess. Whatever mess he creates, you do not get rid of just because you got rid of him. Hey, hey, you know, I, you know I watched the last dance in between all commercials and all segments, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, and, and listen, it's pro it's maybe a 10 percent chance that A.B. doesn't that A.B. doesn't mess this up, that A.B. does the right thing. <laughs> right. And and, and, right. And, and and so but I remember, you know, Michael Jordan, he was talking about nine out of 10. And they said, you know, like nine times like you could get a like this. It might cure you or like the other time you oh, could yeah. get a freaking like you could die. Right. With and what injury, Mike said, right? it depends on how effing bad the headache is. And listen. <laughs> When you look at Antonio Brown, bro, it's just worth it. Matt LaFleur, not a great coach. Matt LaFleur, not inspiring when he speaks. Matt LaFleur, not changing offense and making it innovative in Green Bay. Just turn around, hand it to Aaron Jones. If we want to win, Aaron Rodgers, you just make a good throw. It was the Aaron offense. That's what it was. But when you get A.B., it changes things. The other thing we do know is without A.B., they get stumped out in the NFC Championship anyway. Without A.B. this year, I don't think they even win the NFC North because I believe the Minnesota Vikings do. And so you've messed it up and you've messed it up royal, royally anyway. Like, this is over. Aaron Rodgers ain't going to win the Super Bowl with this team the way it's constructed. Matt LaFleur ain't going to be no coach no more. And eventually, Jordan Love going to be the quarterback with a new coach. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.